हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन दी सी एस आर नेट मैथमेटिक्स जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर सोल्यूशन इन दिस लेक्चर आई विल ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ यू कैन सॉल्व दी पार्ट बी रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन ऑफ द रियल अनालिसिस माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर हरीश कर यू कैन फाइंड मी ऑन माई यूट्यूब चैनल वेयर यू कैन फाइंड द प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ सी एस आर यू जी सी नेट एंड यू कैन सी इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ यू कैन सॉल्व द कम्प्लेक्स अनालिसिस पी वाई कम्प्लेक्स अनालिसिस ऑफ द जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर सोल्यूशन apart from them you can also find the various lecture related to the csr net and the gate mathematics all i have explained you with the help of the shortcut so you can subscribe my youtube channel so that when i uploaded my next video you will get the notification now remember students our target in this video is to how you can attempt the question in a very very simple manner fine always remember your target is to solve the question in the 10 to 15 second time periods i understand that once you are in the examination hall the 10 or 15 seconds are not comfortable for you but that's why i'm asking you you must watch about my this playlist try to understand that how you can attempt the question how you can think the question and how you can read the question once you can understand the statement of the problem then you can easily get the answer So now let's start with this question. The first one is let S is the dense subset of the R. Can you think about any of the dense subset of the R? That is my Q. Fine. F is my any given function. So I can choose F is either a continuous function or F I can choose it as a discontinuous function. Define the G from. So what is my G? G is my from Q to R. Such that g of x is f of x. That means the function g is defined as f of x. Which of the following statement is necessarily true? Is necessarily true? G is continuous on S. G is continuous on sorry f is continuous on the S. So I can define any function which is continuous. What is the definition of the continuity? You can choose any of the constant function. Fine. This is my S. And other function is I can choose an S one R minus Q. That is the irrational number. So clearly say F is my continuous on the S because S is my Q. Every constant function is contained. That satisfied. Is this function is continuous on R minus Q? No. Why? Because the function is not continuous on R. Fine. Clearly say this function is not continuous on R. So this option is. Not necessary true. So that option is cancelled. If G is my continuous, G is defined on the S. So G is continuous on the S. So in this case, what is the G of X? G of X is my zero for all X in my Q. I can choose on this example. Clearly say G is my continuous and F is continuous on S. So now they are talking only on the S. That is this part. so that f is also continuous on the s but i will provide you the counter example to discard the option so this may or may not be g is identically zero g is defined on the s that means g is identically zero so again i can choose an as this example f is continuous on r minus s that is only this case and f is continuous on r minus this is the given condition to you so clearly say f is continuous on r minus s because on the r minus s the function is a constant every constant function is a continuous then f is identically zero but this is not identically zero that means this option is also cancel out fine look at the third fourth option g is identically zero i can choose and g is again my this function f is continuous on the s that is again i can choose in the same function fine again the same example this work for this case fine g is identically zero this is my g fine g of x is my zero for all x in my q f is cons continuous on the s again this is my f f is a zero for all s in q so both are my continuous they satisfied and f is identically zero again you can see what is the domain of the f is r so this f is not identically zero on the r so this option is also cancel only left behind is my option a b that is the correct answer of this problem 
how we can verify that whether second option is the correct or not so that's again a very very simple uh, firstly I, as i mentioned you this is the example fine as i mentioned you in for this example the option second is the correct but look at that if g is continuous on s what does it means what does it means if i choose a sequence in the s if it is converges to the x then g of xn will converges to the g of x by the definition of the continuity now you can see that on the domain s that is on the domain q on the domain q g is identically to the f g of x is equal to f of x what does it means f of x n converges to the f of x so what is the meaning of that a sequence converges to the x f of x n converges to the f that means f is continuous on s they are talking only on the s not on the r or r minus s so that's why this option is the correct option now if you think about that how i can think about this problems you i recommended you you must watch what my this lecture py question on the continuity you have understand that i have always mention you in this exam in this lecture you always start with the function that f is constant f is exponential and f is a linear function always start from this example to discard the options look at the second example this again the part b consider the set a set of all those queues x in the queue says that this condition hold which of the following statement is my true they are talking about the supremum and infimum very very simple if you already watch my this lecture of the infimum and supremum you can get your answer in the 10 to 15 second remember your target is to find the value of the x so can you find the value of the x from this case 0 to x root 2 plus 1 over root 2 minus 1 and your target is like clearly say this is my infimum fine so this two options are cancel out this is my supremum so can you solve this expression so clearly say if you rationalize them it's a root 2 plus 1 whole square over 2 minus 1 so what is the answer of this 2 plus 1 plus 2 root 2 that means 3 plus 2 root 2 is the correct answer of this problem a very simple approach as i mentioned you again in this py question series you must watch about my this lecture to understand the concept of infimum and supremum next one is an is my bounded sequence so you can choose any of the sequence like this or you can choose this sequence any of the constant sequence and so on then which of the following statement is my false again a very very simple you can see the options firstly limit infimum limit supremum infimum supremum and so on so that means first of all do you know the relation between the infimum of the sequence limit of the infimum limit of the supremum and supremum these four options are given to you in the statement so what is the relation between them this is the relation fine now look at the first option if limit of the infimum and limit of the supremum are same what does it means the sequence is convergent that's a definition so yes this option is the correct statement but we need a false state look at the second option infimum of a n and limit supremum of a n they both are same and what is the meaning of that if this limit the value of this and value of this are same clearly say the limit of infimum is also same of the limit of the supremum also same of the infimum by by using the sandwich theorem we all know if a is less than of the b is less than or equal to a what does it means b is equal to a fine the same case happening here so what does it means if limit infimum and limit supremum are same what does it means the sequence is convergent so yes this option is also correct option but we need a false state moreover you can also see that the option first and the second are the same options but they have written in the different manners now look at the c option limit supremum sorry supremum only this side and 
limit infimum if they both are equal what does it means again it implies that limit of the infimum limit of the supremum are same fine that it implies this sequence a n is convergent but he said constant is it necessary not true why can you provide the one example whose limit in which is a convergent and not a which is a bounded convergent but not a constant you can see this is my sequence all knows that this is a bounded sequence find what is the limit of the supremum zero limit infimum is also zero fine so this condition satisfied and but it is not a constant sequence so yes this option is the false so that's the right answer now since this is a part b only one correct option is there so that's we get the answer as a third is the right answer but let me tell you the fourth option also supremum that is the this last point is same as of the infimum now if the boundary points are same what does it means that means limit infimum limit supremum all are equal what does it means if all are equal that means the only thing is the sequence is my constant fine so the limit is uh, limit infimum limit supremum infimum and all are means the sequence is my constant so yes it's a constant this is a false statement so the only right option is c is my right how you can think about that again you can watch about my limit infimum and supremum lecture as well as py question on the sequences if you if you watch my this sequence lecture you can get your answers again in a very very simple manner don't forget to like share and comment on my videos look at the another question what is the cardinality of the set of the real solution how you can think this question in the examination first of all what come in your mind when you are talking about the solution of the equation f of x is equal to 0 what is the solution of that that means you are talking about the algebraic solutions that means you can think about this solution as a numerical analysis and i am very sure that before going to the examination you already watch my this lecture so that you can get your answer in a simple manner how you can solve that i can write this equation in in write this solution in this manner fine now you can see what is the solution of this what is the cardinality can you draw the graph of e raised to power x this is the graph of the e raised to power x fine can you draw the graph of 1 minus x when x is equal to 0 e raised to power 0 1 when x is equal to 0 e raised to power 1 so it's a decreasing graph this is the graph how many point of the intersection that is the unique point of intersection so if the unique point of the intersection is there what is the cardinality cardinality is only one so the right answer of this problem is b is the right answer of this problem fine you must watch about my this lecture to understand this problem in a very simple manner students you can see that all those questions which was asked in this july 2024 if you already watch my all these py question series with the help of the shortcut tricks you can easily solve this problem very easy i hope you can like comment on the share this video to your other friends as well let's see is the collection of all those set s such that power set is countably infinite then what is the nature of this set c i think very simple first of all what is the uh, tips as i provided you in my this lecture of the countability because the question is related to the countability so what i told you in this lecture is first of all they are talking about the power set fine so look at that what will happen if a is my finite set then the power set is also finite fine if a is my infinite set then what is the power set is it will be the countably sorry it is a uncount if the set a is my infinite then the power set cardinality of the power set is uncountable fine if your set is if your set a say for example a is uh 
countably infinite set fine as i can see in the this option countably infinite set then what will be the power set the power set will be my uncountable fine now now in all these options always remember set power set never power set never be the countably infinite and you can see that in all these option is a countable is a finite either the uncountable fine but it can never be the countably infinite so what is the s what is the cardinality of this then the s c what is the c c is my empty set so that's the right answer of this problem. you can see there is a countably infinite many set but there is no option for that only right option is d is my correct option okay look at that if a is a mapping from rm to rn and it's a non zero mapping which of the following statement is my correct i am very sure that you already solved this question in the 5 second why because you already watched my lecture of the linear transformation and the countability what is the shortcut tricks as i told you if your f is a mapping from a to b fine and you can say f is 1 1 then what does it means cardinality of a is less than or equal to cardinality of b if f is on to then cardinality of a is greater than or equal to cardinality of b if f is bijective then cardinality of a is cardinality of b fine but make sure students converse may not be true fine now this is the same shortcut fix that i told you in my countability and the linear transformation so let's look at that what is the cardinality of r raised to power m is m cardinality of r raised to power n is n now look at the first option a is 1 1 this option satisfied then cardinality of m is less than equal to n but he said m is greater than equal to n straight forward option is cancel second option a is on to if mapping is on to then this condition hold that means cardinality of m must be greater than equal to cardinality of n but he said m is less than equal to n that's option is cancel if a is bijective then cardinalities are same then definitely m is equal to n so this option is the correct option if a is 1 1 then m is less than equal to n then m is equal to n equality here but but it it is less than but it is not always it may be less than of the n so this is not true equality only when it is 1 1 and on to both fine and moreover if we all know if it is a v to v same dimension and it is a 1 1 if and only if it is on to but you can see the dimensions are not same so this condition is also not applicable so the right answer is only c is my correct option of this problem now if i think about this problem in some another manner like what will happen if i interchange this option this one and this option fine okay fine this option uh, the, uh, the answer of this problem is fine but i will tell you what will happen if in the examination this will be given to you then is it a correct option is it a correct option now you can see a is 1 1 that means this condition hold but not on to if a is not on to what does it means a is not bijective if a is not bijective that means m is not equal to n so from this case m is less than equal to m m is not less equal to n so what does it implies that means m is less than n and then in that case it will be satisfied similarly for this case a is on to that means m is greater than equal to m but not 1 1 not 1 1 means that is not a bijective if not a bijective means that is m is not equal to n what does it implies m is strictly greater than n fine in that case it will be right option but anyhow 
for this particular case of the July 24th, the right option is only C is the right answer. You must watch about my these PY question series. Okay, let S is the collection of all those x in the R such that 1 minus x raised to power 4, 1 minus x raised to power cube greater than 24. Then which of the following is true? Not necessary, but it's true. S is empty bijective bijection. Look at that. If there is a bijection, that means cardinality of S must be cardinality of the N. And we know that cardinality of the N is L naught. In this case, cardinality of S, cardinality of the R, that is uncountable. Bijection between the S and any non-empty finite set. A is a non-empty. That's my target. Very simple. It is given that X is greater than 1 because at X is to 1 is a 0 by 0 form. You can see, you can choose any of the X. So let's say X is my 100. Fine. Definitely, 1 minus x raised to power 4 is approximately with the 10 raised to power 4. Fine. 100 raised to power 4. 1 minus x cube is approximately with the minus 100 cube. So that means the ratio of them will approximately be the 100. Fine. And that is greater than of 22. So that means if I choose any number which is greater than of 100. Fine that is belongs to the S, fine, not particular 100, if I choose any of the say alpha, alpha is any large number, not 100, it may be the 99, it may be the 98, it may be the 1000, any number, if I choose any number x which is greater than of the alpha, alpha is my large number, fine, if alpha is a large number then definitely 1 minus x4 is approximately with the minus x4. So that means this condition will be hold. So that means your s will be, what is that? This will be 20, uh, that number alpha, comma infinity. That is my this set. Whatever the alpha like 100, comma infinity. Fine, 99, comma infinity. So definitely, what is that? This is my uncountable the card what is that is empty no because the 100 clearly say 100 is belongs to the s what is the cardinality of s is it alpha naught no this option is cancelled cardinality is same finite set cardinality of the finite set is alpha naught this is not because this is the infinite set so that means only right option is c is the right answer of this problem you can see a very very simple way you have to think any of this set, any of the element. Definitely 100, 99 and the larger power definitely hold for this set. So that will be the infinite set. Cardinality will not be the elf node. So this option is cancelled. Empty cancel. There is no bijection between them. So that is again the wrong option of this. Okay, look at this one. This is the sequence of the function. That is a uniform convergence. Fine. Again, a very, very simple question. You, uh, if you watch already my this lecture, you can get the answer in a very simple manner. Look at that. Where root denotes the non-negative square root. What is the meaning of that? This quantity is my non-negative. Inside quantity is my non-negative. Fine. That's the meaning of this. Then your target is to find the limit as an approach is infinity. What does it mean? Your target is to check about the point-wise convergence only. Fine. I call this number is my fx. So what are case? Since x is belongs to the r and for this case, I can assume x is my 0 or x is my non-zero. If x is 0, the function will be 0 over 0 plus 1 by root n. So the answer will be 0. If x is non-zero, then what will be my limit as n approaches infinity? x square over x square plus 1 over n. So that will be limit x square divided by x square. That is comes to be x square divided by mod x. Make sure student, this root denotes a non-negative square root means the inside value is my positive. Square root value is my positive. 
So if you take this number, that's the plus minus sign. So what is the answer of this? Clearly say I can return this number is mod of x, fine, over mod x. So that means this is my mod x. Now clearly say zero case will also satisfied. So f of x is zero for all x not possible. F of x is x is not possible because if you take x is my minus one or any number which is less than of the zero, what is the answer of this case? It will be root of this is a negative answer. So that is cancel. This option is the for all x. There exists f is not defined. Wrong option. Only D option is the correct answer of this problem. You can see so very simple. The only thing you have to make why this is written there because to avoid the complex number. Fine. So to avoid the complex number, this part is there. So the right answer is only mod of x is the correct option of this problem. You can watch my this lecture and you can get your answers in a very simple manner. Make sure, student. I again recommended you. You can watch my these lectures to understand this py questions and the shortcut tricks in a very simple manner. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and thanks for watching. I hope you can like, share, and comment on these videos. Best of luck, students. Happy learning.